Hey, I'll see you on tour in Las Vegas, Chicago, and Grand Rapids in Chicago. It's stand-up and a live panel show. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets, and make sure you go to JimmyDoor.com. Everybody, have special guests with us. Patrick Corelci is the co-host of the weekly audio documentary series Red Pilled America, which he and his wife Adriana Cortez have produced since 2018. I've been on that show. They recently launched their show's first video documentary called Rescue Ruse, How Sound of Freedom Conned Christians. It reveals the shocking truth behind the surprise box office smash Sound of, Fear, Sound of Freedom and its alleged hero, Tim Ballard. Those are big, those, that's, that's fighting words there. <laughs> so, uh, well, here it is. Here's what you tweeted out. Uh, breaking RPA's first video documentary, Early Access. So here, I want to just play the... I'll play the trailer, okay, Patrick? Let's play that, Perfect. and we'll come back and talk about it. The box office smash Sound of Freedom portrayed her as a monster that sold children into sex slavery. They called her character Katie, but the hero of the film made sure the world knew her real name. Her name is Kelly Suarez. Kelly Suarez, real person, right? Kelly was Miss Cartagena, famous in town, and she recruited kids to her modeling agency. But she was selling them. 12-year-olds. Kelly Johanna Suarez was branded the kind of supervillain few could even imagine existed. A ruthless businesswoman whose product was child sex slaves. And they branded her that before a global audience. In the case of Kelly, who is the person real. Ah, también es un personaje real. Una sí, mujer. Muy real, muy real. Kelly became despised on an international scale. But what the filmmakers didn't tell the public is that she was never convicted of child sex trafficking. She'd eventually sue the filmmakers for destroying her life. And the Christian team behind the movie now claim that their true story was really just a work of fiction. Now Kelly Johanna Suarez speaks out for the first time since the movie's release. Por eso digo que este lo esperando por años. And she has a message for the world. So that's today. Today is July twenty fifth. So red pill. So you have you released that video that the um, that documentary today. Where is it released at? Today it's on, it's on redpilledamerica.com dot com and it's also on our Twitter account. Okay, so you, well, uh, why not YouTube? It's on YouTube as well. It's oh. on YouTube. It's on Rumble. It's everywhere. It's all, on all the social medias. We also have an audio version out because we. Uh, uh, have an audio podcast, okay. so it's on all audio uh, platforms as well. Too. So no, I did not see the Sound of Freedom movie, but I remember it was the biggest deal going, and it somehow it became a, a, like a Christian thing or in a right wing thing. And now, so tell me what the story is behind Sound of Freedom, and what, what how is it wrong? Yeah, you know, it is. Uh, I can't uh, exaggerate what a big deal it was within the conservative media. I mean, it was huge. Every big name was covering it. Elon Musk was tweeting it out. I mean, uh, I think Trump was in on like a premiere of it. Every major conservative and Christian figure was on it. And the reason being is that this man, Tim Ballard, uh, purports to save child sex slaves. That is his thing. He's been doing it since I guess professionally since October of 2014, I guess and I take that back, since 2014 or so. But before that, he worked for the Department of Homeland Security uh, and the child trafficking, internet, uh, child internet crimes, something like that. Uh, and he worked there for a number of years, I want to say around a decade or so. And he had this novel idea that he wanted to uh, privatize uh, saving child sex slaves. So he went around, he, he raised some money, and does this uh, raid in Colombia. Turns out, he, uh, he says something like, you know, he saved 55 something uh, people, uh, ch children, actual child slaves, he says, like that he had proven that they are, were slaves and that they had been abused and that they have catalogs, they, they have ways to, to know that these people are child slaves. So he goes around, you know, um, trying to pitch a, a show. He has a TV show that he puts out on it called The Abolitionist. Eventually, they make a movie, 2018. The movie uh, sits on the shelf for about four years or so, and they kind of insinuate that Disney, who ended up uh, getting the film's rights after a, a merger or after a purchase of another company, uh, they claimed that they were shelving it because they were trying to, to um, 
protect Hollywood pedophiles was, was what they suggested. The movie finally comes out, major, major hit. Uh, and we looked at it and we're like, uh, let's, we were excited. We're like, oh, this is kind of cool and kind of an independent film blowing up. Let's do a, maybe a film review on it. Or we've done like makings of the movie before we did one for Mel Gibson's movie. So we thought, let's maybe let's do that. We go and we check out the film. And uh, I've, uh, for a living, I write scripts for true stories. And I'm watching this thing and this is based on a true story. And I'm like, this is not, this cannot be a true story. I've, uh, I can, I can see right through this at the very end, the, the pitch that kind of raised, raised my spidey senses the most is that they basically said that you can save child. You could stop child sex slavery by buying tickets to their movie. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't sound right. So we start doing a deep dive into this thing and uh, we start uncovering untruth after untruth at the end of the day with this film, what we ended up finding is this major Colombian raid that he did that was became the plot of the movie. Uh, there wasn't a single child sex slave saved. We got uh, our hands on the Colombian uh, court documents, uh, went through them all, went through depositions, went through uh, you know various kind of court arguments and evidence and what have you. Uh, there, there was no child sex slaves saved. None of the people had been trafficked before that day. Uh, some of them were being paid uh, to be there, like uh, an attend, like almost like they were a cast in a reality TV show. And so we're like, this guy is makes Jesse Smollett look like a truth teller. Huh. He's just uh, the, one of the. I, 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 as we were starting digging into this thing, I started looking at this. I'm not a homicide detective, but I watch a lot of Law and Order which probably makes me a homicide detective. Um, I started getting that feeling that a homicide detective would get when they start to realize that they're on the case of a serial killer. And I'm not saying this man is a serial killer, but I'm saying that he's a unicorn. He has fooled an entire niche, which is the Christian community, which is a huge Christian community uh, with these bogus, and at least every time, every story that we've looked into that he's promoted have been bogus. And it's so it's the shocking thing about it, Jimmy, is the lies that he says are so easily verifiable because all you got to do is go to court documents. You go in and you look and see, compare what he says happened to the actual court documents. This isn't conjecture. This isn't hearsay. I mean, it's you're looking at court documents. In some cases, he filed the reports <laughs> and you're comparing his reports to what he's actually saying in the public about saving children and they're compl a complete contradiction to each other. Now, so we decided I, we got to do a documentary on this thing. Now I watch a lot of the cooking channels, so I consider myself a top chef. And <laughs> uh, this, so you're, so he didn't expose, so what you're saying is that he was working at the Department of Homeland Security. He was like, hey, this would be, I, I could uh, privatize this, make a lot of money, make a movie out of it, and it would all be fake. Um, he didn't first. So there's two questions. Uh, the first question is he didn't think anybody was going to fact check him, do you think? Well, this is I, I, I think that the man is one of the most I'm almost impressed by him. I shouldn't say almost. I am impressed by him, by his ability and his charisma to convince people. It's one of those topics that people don't want to delve into. So they're kind of like, okay, we got somebody over there doing that. Let's just kind of throw some money at this thing. I, I don't want to hear about child sex slaves. I don't want to hear about, you know, what happens to these people. Let's just kind of let this guy deal with it. And he kind of is, is uh, taking advantage of this human kind of uh, behavior of just kind of not questioning somebody that's going after child sex slaves. I'm going to give you a perfect example. When we started questioning his stuff, we, he has this moment, this dog tag. This dog tag thing is the thing that launched his company. Uh, and we pulled up the court documents on it and we proved that it didn't happen, that, uh, that the court documents clearly show that he didn't interview the kid, didn't have the kind of interactions that he said that he had. The dog tag would have been in evidence, would have been part of in these reports. and It wasn't in anything. Um, so we're looking at that and I'm like, how can this guy get away with something like this? And I'm coming to the conclusion that people just don't want to question uh, this kind of work. 
And so I go out there and I start questioning things. And I, and I talked to Prager Yu, who produced a, a documentary on him and who I've also produced a documentary on. And I, and I approach them as kind of a friendly, like, hey, I, I, we're doing this story. We did an eight-part series on this. Uh, and I said, I, I want you to know the documentary that you did, he said some things that are provably false in your documentary. And so I kind of want to get a comment from you. Uh, the CEO of the company who I interviewed, I spent a, a month of my life producing a documentary on them, uh, uh, basically suggested that we are protecting pedophiles. And, and so that is what people go up against when they question him on these kinds of things. Uh, is is that is this accusation that you're that you're potentially a pedophile if you are questioning anything that they're doing? Well, Patrick, why are you protecting pedophiles? <laughs> the fascinating thing is, is anybody that knows our story, uh, no, we we launched our show because we called out this guy getting in bed with other people's kids. Uh, we were, uh, my daughter was at this really elite, uh, prestigious private school in Hollywood. Had all the studio heads there. Had you know, Van Jones had his kid there. I'd see him on campus all the time, all the celebs and what have you. Caught this guy getting in bed with other people's kids, called him out, became this five-year battle at the school. We ended up telling our first story of the show based on that. So this is not something that I, you know, I, I, I don't take these kinds of things lightly. I've done a two-part series on the show where my m mother was, you know, sexually assaulted. So we, we take these things very, very seriously. Yet the conservatives... And, and in particular, the Christian, uh, these, these kind of Christian influencers who promoted him like no other. And I'm talking major, major names. They will not cover this story now because all of their hands are dirty. And the mainstream media won't cover it because they all did glowing stories on this guy. Who doesn't want to do a story of some Superman that's saving child sex slaves? CBS did this glowing piece on him, ABC, MSNBC. And so it's just been one of these kinds of frustrating things. And so this woman that we that we interviewed, her name is Kelly Johanna Suarez. She was effectively framed because she was cast as this part. She was going to this party trying to meet a rich American, and they framed her as basically a child sex slave. There's no evidence of her being a child sex slave. Uh, she's still been dealing with this now for ten years in a Colombian court. You mean you mean uh, you mean a child sex sex slave me, trafficker? Trafficker, trafficker. Sorry, yes. There's no there's no uh, evidence of her being a trafficker, uh, and they but they had someone else say the things that that they are claiming that are that she said, and then they just projected it onto her, and got because she they had her on camera. It is this kind of like. Uh, so casting. Does, so call. does she have a lawsuit against this? this yes, she, she does. sued them here. In, she sued Angel Studios. She sued in, um, in a court in California, in Utah, in Utah, in Utah, because that's where they're based. And it was one of the things that we saw immediately. They're going to sue because this is so clear. Okay. In that. So how did that turn out? What's well, still going on? It just last week got uh, the the judge, the Utah judge, basically uh, allowed it to proceed. And said that, you know, in his decision that you guys knowingly made uh, false statements about her or you uh, uh, did it with reckless disregard of, of the facts. And so now it's proceeding. And so this story is just going to get bigger and bigger because now they're going to have depositions. Now there's going to be discovery. You're going to really look at this case and see what I'm seeing. I mean, I'm talking it's irrefutable. Watch our documentary. It's called Rescue Ruse. It's at redpilledamerica.com. You could also see it on any of the social media platforms. It's irrefutable. And this, these, this, these companies, this film get $250 million. Operation Underground Railroad has raised over $250 million. It's around $250 million since their launch. And this was the raid that so launched why would their the, company. So, I mean, child sex slavery, it, it's real, right? I mean, it's not like he invented... A problem that there, there is that that does happen. We all know about Jeffrey Epstein, and I'm sure there's ten more just like him that nobody knows about that are working for the Mossad and the CIA. And so, why why would he invent problems? Why wouldn't he just go find the real ones? I think that it's hard to find problems like that, and I don't think I think it's obviously out there and it's obviously happens, um, but I don't think that it happens on the level that this man tries to claim. Um, I think that a perfect example, he says that the California, excuse me, uh, United States is the biggest kind of uh, market for, child's, uh, for child uh, 
um, uh, sex, sex slavery, slavery and mm-hmm. all the, you know, assault and that kind of thing. Yet all of his operations are in foreign countries with corrupt governments. How, why is that? Why are you working in these foreign countries? I'll tell you why. He goes to these countries, has a wad of cash, floats it around, gets some low-level uh, street hustler coming up to him. Uh, it, all, all of these countries have prostitution, or at least the ones that we looked at have, all have prostitution. Um, so, but pimping is illegal. But he gets these guys to kind of say, oh, God, I can make 25 grand on this deal. Uh, it's six, $6,000 is our annual income. I could get $25,000 in a matter of a couple of days by just being a middleman between a, 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 an act that's legal here. And so they, they put on these sex parties, pay people to come. So people are getting paid $200 to come to this party. And, um, and then the, the police swoop in because pimping is illegal. And so if you can get some minors there th- that want that $200 for the attendance uh, payment, then now you got a story. I mean, it's like you have a room and you're saying, here's a party in here. Go in here. You open up the door. They all go in. And then you go around the other side and you find it that they're in a jail and you, ah, I'm going to free you from jail. And you, you open up the jail and you let them out and then you claim that you freed them or you claim that you saved them. And the people that he's brought up from this Colombian island raid that is, became the movie, he's produced two people. And one was an adult, but he tries to claim that he was a kid uh, when the raid happened. He was 18 years old. The other one was 17. He's tried to claim that he was 11. And the guy went there um, knowing that there was a sex party and that there wasn't going to be uh, – that he wasn't going to have sex with anybody. He went there for the $200 uh, payment. And, but this man has been going around for years saying that these were child sex slaves and that they needed saving and that they've been stuck in this system forever. And there's no evidence of that, at least in this Columbia raid case. So, I mean, I – you know, I'm familiar with the Jerry Sandusky story and he, you know, there, there are like kind of almost like mini conventions of these people that get together and do this sorts of thing, meaning, uh, child predators. And, uh, I, he was, he ran in a homosexual ring of them. And, and, uh, so yeah, it doesn't make sense that he wouldn't, he couldn't, uh, uncover this stuff inside the United States. I'll say that that's for sure. Um, and so, well, and it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. I mean, if it was the, the man's claim to save like five, 6,000, uh, you know, women and children that from being trafficked yet, you know, all these kinds of accusations come out against him. He has a line of women now that he, that worked with him that say that he, they did not witness a single child saved in these operations. These are people that worked closely with him. Um, but when he's getting these attacks, if you'd saved five or 6,000, uh, child slaves, don't you think you'd be able to fill a gymnasium of people that basically is saying, uh, this man saved my life. This man, I'm, I'm this uncle of this girl that saved, I'm the aunt, I'm the mother, I'm the father. You, I think it wouldn't be too hard to fill a, a, a nice hall of people that you've saved. Uh, well, those we'll people aren't coming out. I guess the. The two uh, tells on this will be the, the the court case in Utah, yes. and then to see if he sues you. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trust me, I think if, I, if if I'm doing it right, I, I I'm expecting something along those lines. So um, we'll see what that how that we'll court see. Case. What, like I said, we done an eight part series on this, and he didn't come at us then. So uh, uh, we'll see what happens with this one. Okay. Well, and, I, and, and, and Tim, if you're watching this, because I know you're watching everything that I'm doing right now. Aren't you tired? You have all these people coming at you right now. You know the truth. You're going through these court documents. You're going through these court processes right now. The truth is going to come out. You have a Christian audience. They will forgive you if you come forward and say, I made a mistake and repent. You, the Christian audience, your Christian audience will forgive you for that. I know that you're tired. I could see it. I've been watching hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos of you. I've seen the progression. Okay. It's time. Give these women their, their, uh, some peace. Give this woman that you've been trying to put into jail for 20 years. You tried to put her into jail for, give them some peace and move on and fess up. That's my message to Tim. The movie is Rescue Ruse, How Sound of Freedom Con Christians. Uh, it's at redpilledamerica.com. It's also at Twitter and YouTube. 
Uh, Patrick uh, Corelci, thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you so much for having me on, Jimmy. I really appreciate it. You're one of the few that are willing to, to platform this discussion, so I really appreciate that. Hey, I'll see you on tour in Las Vegas, Chicago, and Grand Rapids. In Chicago, it's Stand Up and a live panel show. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets, and make sure you go to JimmyDoor.com. Thank you.